pretty much takes care of this part, or at least this uh, operation. Okay, starting to look like a look like the drawing. So uh, the only thing that's left is to uh, mill these radii in the corner, these three sixteenths radii. So let's get started on that. Get the burrs off of this part first. Okay, now, there are two ways we can do this radii, right? It's, it's not critical, it's just for looks, it's aesthetic. So we can either, if you have a corner rounding end mill, you can use that. If you don't, you can use a uh, belt sander or even a file if you're ambitious. I'm going to start out, I'm going to do first couple with uh, corner rounding end mill. So let's see, let's make a, a note as to which, which ones are radius. Again, so we don't get mixed up. Okay, so that's going to be radius, that's going to be radius, and where else are we? This one. Okay, so there's just three, nope, oh, two more here. These guys up here are going to be radius as well. Okay. Let's start with those. I need some taller. I need some taller parallels again. Just so my. Uh, Cutter doesn't get too close to the vise. Cutters don't like vices, and vices don't like cutters. So try and stay as far away as possible. All right. Tap this thing down. It's tight on the parallels. Change out my half-inch end mill for a 3 16 radius cutter corner rounding end mills, as they're called. Make sure you can see what's going on here. I do have a video out on how to use these things, but let's kind of do a quick review here. Uh, basically, you just uh, pick up one edge at a time and then uh, back off a couple thousandths. Now we'll raise it up and pick up the uh, the top of the radius. I'll try and go not to go too deep because it will. Uh, you know, this is an aesthetic thing. If you go too deep, it's going to show. So just take drop your cutter down or raise your cable up just until it uh, cut the cut uh, goes to the outside of the end of the uh, cutter and then back off a couple thousands all right 
And now that you're all set, your dials are all set, you can just crank in to depth in both directions. And go ahead and mill it. There's one. Same thing in this direction. All right, that puts a nice radius on those corners. Like I said, the other way is just to use a belt sander. And since it is just for looks, you can get away with that. So let's let's do that on the other three. Okay, if you do use a belt sander, don't don't do it by eye. Okay, get yourself a radius gauge, 3 16 radius gauge in this case, and use that to gauge gauge your progress. Okay. Otherwise, it's, it's going to look like crap. You, know, you, want, you want this to look nice. You put a lot of work into these projects. You want them to look nice. So don't, now's not the time to cut corners. Take some time, use a gauge, and get, make sure you get a 3 16 radius, not a 5 30 seconds or a 1 8 or whatever. <laughs> I found when, hand, when grinding radii like this on a belt sander, stay away from the, uh, the outside, the tangent part of the, of the curve, okay? Just concentrate on the center. That's where most of the material has to be removed. If you get too far out here, it's easy to overshoot. So save, save, save these positions till last, okay? Just work on the center till you get the center right, and then kind of work your way out until you get a nice looking radius. I don't know if you can see that. But it looks pretty good. Okay. A lot quicker than doing it on the mill and where it's not critical in a case like this. Nothing wrong with belt sanding or even filing. So that takes care of that part. Let's move on to the uh, the backing plate. Okay, we're down to the last part. This is the back plate. Okay, this is purpose of this part is to uh, hold the neural holder into its slot. Um, the mounting bracket we just made does the same thing, um, except it also allows the tool or the knurling tool to be held in the tool post on the lathe. So this is a pretty simple part. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, Looking at it, it's a piece of quarter inch thick aluminum. I mentioned before I thought it was steel. I was mistaken. It is aluminum. Uh, so it's quarter inch thick. It's inch and a half long, inch wide, four tapped holes in it. And if you remember back when I made the body on this thing, I screwed up the hole spacing on one of these four hole patterns and made it nine sixteenths apart instead of five eighths. And I mentioned we're gonna, rather than scrap the part, we'll just modify the mating part to suit. And this is the mating part. So on this part, my part, these holes will be five, uh, 9 16 apart instead of 5 8 
hopefully yours will be to print uh, but that's the way it goes sometimes uh, okay so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it I'm just going to bust through it get it out of the way then we'll get on to putting this thing together so first thing we need to do is get the camera aimed at the chuck or the vise going to use a uh, half inch end mill so they got, got the piece sawed out save you the grief for watching me saw again so we'll just take a clean up cut one edge If I could find my file, I'd knock the burrs off. I'll do the same thing on the opposite edge. Bump it up a few thousands just to clean it up some. And get a measurement. Doesn't matter if it cleans up, I just just as long as I have enough enough of a uh, machine surface to measure. We're at one inch sixty-seven thousandths, so I have this finishes at one inch, so we have sixty-seven thousandths to go. I mentioned before, it's in, always a good habit to get into to tap your work down, so we'll go ahead and do that. Set my dial for 67 thousandths. Crank it up all the way to 10. We'll leave 10 thousandths for finished cut. Or I'd like to take one roughing and one finishing cut for the top. So I try not to leave too much stock on when I saw these parts out. should be one inch wide. One inch and one thousandth, close enough for hand grenades. Okay, now on thin parts like this, rather than end mill everything, I like to side mill the ends of it. Saves a little time. Uh, if you do that, you're working on one edge, one edge of the vise like this, so one side of the vise, make sure and prop the other side up so the movable jaw doesn't tilt when you clamp down on it. Um, it doesn't hold your part very well if the jaw is not parallel with the part. So just use it. In this case, I'm just using a one inch spacer on the other end of the jaws to keep them from cranking in. So now I'll go ahead and score up this one end. Sure your parallels are out of the way. End mills and parallels don't mix. If you happen to creep out and catch the end mill, it makes a heck of a noise. It doesn't do the end mill any good at all. Okay. Then I'll flip it over and do the other edge. enough to clean it up, get a measurement. We are at 1 inch 540. Finish length is 1.5 inches according to print. So we have 40 thousandths to go. So 30 thousandths rough cut, 10 thousandths finishing.
All right, and while, we're, while we're milling, just go ahead and put the radii in the corners. Can use, set my stop here, and we can do all four corners in one setup. We have a quarter inch spacer. It's 3 sixteenths radii on it, just like the uh, mounting bracket. Drop down to the touches and back off two thousandths. Okay. We'll drop it way down and pick up the other edge of the radius. Alright, back off a couple thousands here as well. We don't end up with a ridge. Alright, that should be Set. I like to climb mill with these cutters. With a much nicer finish. There's one edge. Two edges. Two corners. left is our four tapped holes, so let's go ahead and throw those in there. Stops all set. Power feed for this Z axis. Save a lot of cranking. direction I want to make the closer spacing on the cap holes. So what I'm going to do is just center up on the part. And then I'll just, uh, they're 9, nine sixteenths apart, so I'll go 9.30 seconds each dimension, each direction. Two 
281. And the holes are 3 16 from the other edge here. 188. We'll need a 21 drill, tap drill for a 1032. seconds the other direction. Now for my 9 16 spacing. And inch and an eighth in the X direction. There we print. left is to tap it. Get my tap in a little oil for this aluminum. It's sticky stuff. Okay, that takes care of that part. And that's all there is to the parts for this thing. Um, next, the next video, I think we'll uh, we will. Uh, talk about carbon or case hardening the steel part okay and uh, then we'll get this thing put together and try it out so uh, I'll see you then